Hi folks, uh, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this impromptu video. I have an update on Project LS400. Um, I think it's very valuable information for other owners of a first generation LS400. Um, let's go straight to the point. These are the upstream O2 sensors. So they sit before the catalytic converter, hence the term upstream. And I took them off. They were actually very easy to get off thanks to this flange construction. There are two nuts on either side and you have... I took this off in five minutes. I took them off because I wanted to test them uh, to investigate the hesitation under acceleration issue. And it's very easy to test. You have the connector over here like this. And this on the top where the little... Uh, link is for the locking mechanism the top two connectors are two pins uh, where you can measure the resistance and the resistance between those upper two pins connector one and two should be between 5.1 and 6.3 ohms i believe um, and this one uh, checked out bad so this uh, o2 sensor is bad so i thought well let's replace them but the problem is they are impossible to find um, this type of o2 sensor is unique to the european versions i believe um, i've seen uh, others with a hex nut used on um, on the american us versions and you have a hex over there so you can put a wrench on there anyway these are these are unique and i searched high and low for days and days and i could not find a replacement they are all out of stock they are no longer available so i tried uh, to take them apart it looks like these o2 sensors are threaded in into that flange but it's not the case and i i try to get them off i will probably break them so yeah um, i'm stuck between a rock and a hard place but i found a solution and let me show you i found a supplier in poland that has the direct replacement in stock and here it is i'm gonna open the box in a second and the part number is dox-0101 and i believe uh, the original part number from then so for this one is dox-0215 and let me open up the box with one hand as you can see it has the same flange of course it comes with a gasket and yeah a cord so the only thing i need to do is put that connector on there and then i have a direct replacement i checked and the flange is exactly the same and you cannot unthread these o2 sensors from the flange so you need to have one with the flange if you're uh, located in europe so anyway that's the information i wanted to share i can imagine that other ls400 owners run into the same problem but now i found a direct replacement and it's also from an oem supplier i also wanted to show you how these connectors are assembled so you can de-pin it on the inside you pull out this little bracket first this one is still in original state you can see there is this brown bracket in there you can pull that out once you have that pulled out you can see the camera can focus on this yeah you can see those tiny little tabs beneath the the pins and you can push them down with a small screwdriver i can demonstrate it there's a screwdriver and you can push down on the tiny little tab over there and then you can pull out the pin and the pins are in like this let me get one um, there is this silicone uh, well plug on the back that the wire goes through that's held in place with those tiny little yeah keepers on the back they point upwards and the upward side is this side of the connector so where the uh, the counterpart clicks into and then you have this part with an opening a slot on the lower side because the upper side is this one is a bit dirty but the upper side is completely closed there's an opening over there and that little tab inside the plug clicks into there 
that's how you disassemble those plugs. Alrighty, and this is the end result just before I put it in the car. So we have the new O2 sensor, the old connector. Unfortunately, I couldn't solder the wires to the uh, to the pins in the old connector. Reason is that the solder doesn't adhere to the new wires. It's uh, somewhat of an odd, uh, yeah, very heat resistant material, of course. So what I ended up doing, I used pieces of just copper wire. I soldered them to the pins, reassembled the connectors, and then I used those crimping connectors and a little bit of heat shrink over there. So now we have the uh, new O2 sensors with the old connectors, and now it's time to put them on the car. Alrighty folks, we're over a week later and now it's about time to install them and in all honesty this is take two because at the first attempt I found out that this color section over here which isn't present on the old O2 sensors was a bit too thick for the hole in the exhaust manifold. Uh, the old O2 sensors, the original ones, have a diameter of 14 millimeters and this color section over here was 16 millimeters so I did something that may sound a bit crude but I uh, went out and bought a small belt sander which I'll show you in a second and uh, I just ground off a millimeter of the circumference of the radius that is so it's now just over 14 millimeters and I hope it fits now so now it's time to install this oh yeah and when I sanded it down I had everything covered up in thick duct tape in order not to damage the sensor part itself so now it's time to uh, toss them in alrighty folks welcome underneath the car there they are this is the driver's side O2 sensor it fits nicely I think I may have ground up a little bit too much or at least more than necessary and I put some um, anti-C, some copper grease on the studs over there. There's the connector. This one is a bit difficult to install because you got the steering rack in the way. Let's move over to the passenger side. There's your two sensor. This in went in fairly easy. But you can see the connector over there. I can get a clear shot. Yeah, this is better. You can see the lines of the automatic transmission. These are the cooler lines, or a bit in the way. You have to keep that in mind, but um, I think this will work just fine. Um, I tried, I pulled it, put in the connectors. I always give it a little tug test to see if they're correctly installed because they have been apart completely. And it would be dumb if you install them and they, uh, well, they. Yeah, red loud on their way, so all this, always give them a talk test. Anyway, glad that those two are in. Well, folks, I for one am glad that I've been able to find an OEM brand replacement for these Flens type O2 sensors of the first generation Lexus LS400. It needs a little bit of work, but that's the way it is nowadays with those 30 year old cars and parts that are nowhere to be found. So we really have to be creative and yeah, to keep our cars up and running. So I make this series of uh, Project LS400 videos yeah, in trying to gather information and to help out other Lexus LS400 owners. Uh, if you find it useful, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. You can ask your questions down below in the comment section. And I have my email address up and the channel information. And just don't hesitate to email me, ask your questions. And if I can help, I will try to help. Anyway, this is solved. I'm really curious to see if this solves my hesitation under acceleration issue. We'll find out in a couple of months when the weather is better because it's quite rainy out now and the car is also in winter storage so it may take some time before I can test uh, the new O2 sensors. Anyway I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you on a new episode of Project LS400 anytime soon but for now bye and see you!